What's up you guys, welcome back. Today we have a skin fade, hard part, beard, and we got a lot to cover. Uh, so we're gonna really break this down a little bit on this video and we're going to go further uh, into it as we go. I'm gonna give you guys some tips, some tricks, some information. So without any further ado, let's just get to the video, man. Welcome back, you guys. I'm sure you've seen the thumbnail and you kind of know what's about to go on here. This gentleman came in with this haircut. Obviously, uh, the crown is probably already a little bit shorter than maybe he wanted it cut before, but it's okay. We're going to take that down, stop that from sticking up, and we're going to just do the best job we have. And we're going to give him a little skin fade. This is a pretty extensive one, and I think we're going to have to really go in on the lives and uh, really just kind of pick apart this cut because I think there's a lot of good value here. But I'm going to coach you through and we'll just we'll just talk about it here. But again, we're going to go more in depth on this. So if anybody has any questions uh, or whatever, just meet me on the lives Saturday night lives at 8 p.m. And I might even extend it to a second day throughout the week. So I'm just moving in with the one and one half and I'm scooping out as we move up to the top of the area of the head that I want to uh, kind of move away from. I want to begin that blend just slightly, but more or less, the only thing I'm really considered, the only thing I'm really concentrating on now is to just level the hair down to a one and one half, get it down uh, nice and low. And that's actually going to be about the same width as the comb that I'll use for clipper over comb. So we're going to be able to kind of build off of that. So that that's the whole reason uh, behind that. And as you can kind of see, I'm just kind of coming up off the head. I'm sort of leaving that area. We're going to come back with the clipper over comb. And if this was just like a normal haircut, this kid didn't want a skin fade, say we could just easily do the clipper over comb and you could see how fast this is going to be. Uh, so when you get right down to it, um, these skin fades are obviously a lot more work. There's a lot more that goes into it. Uh, however, when I first started cutting hair, this was generally what people wanted. So you see me coming in with the clipper over comb, moving out from the head slightly. And uh, we covered this in, in lesson two of the lives. And also there's a clipper over comb uh, tutorial on my channel, about a half hour long, if you guys feel like you're lacking in this technique. Uh, but what I was gonna say is there's just no way that you could cut hair within the confines of the amount of time that we have to try to make yourself some money um, without knowing this technique. It's just going to take you too long. And when you get down to it, this is going to speed you up in ways that you can't even imagine because this is how I view this is this is part of like phase two. So phase one, knocking down all the debulk. Phase two is kind of like getting rid of all that hair towards the parietal ridge and beginning that blend. We don't have to perfect it by any means, but we just want to get it kind of close. We want to get everything cut kind of even and uh, in this way. We're, we're going to be setting ourselves up for success and kind of the last part of phase two is is going to be putting in that skin line with that five zero so before i get ahead of myself um lifting up on a diagonal just taking off some of that hair that sticks out by no means should this be perfect don't worry about it we're going to perfect that blend this is just a way to remove the bulk roughly give yourself a good a catalyst or starting point if you will and you know begin the blend uh, in that area but we're going to use texturizing shears you're going to see me use scissor over comb you're going to see me use a variety of techniques to really smooth out those areas so notice how i jump to the other side of the head always do that don't try to put your skin line in from one side and travel all the way around because there's just no chance that you're going to be able to maintain the consistency jump from one side of the head to the other uh, make sure they're even, bring it up a little bit higher if you have to, and uh, just just go ahead and, and make sure that you know you have it even from the starting point on both sides of the head. So I'm, of course, using my Oster uh, Octane with a 5.0 on here, and this is the machine that I use for clipper over comb as well. I know that I always get a comment um, down below in that regard, so you know it's, it's best for you just to use your debulking clippers so that you can move quickly because again i'm all about trying to save time here because we got to do the easy things we got to do easy things fast okay and that's that's just the way that you're going to be able to get through this so nothing that i've done so far minus the clipper over comb was that difficult and i really feel like you guys are all capable of getting a haircut pretty close to this point i'm going to begin moving up with my bronze series nine i actually kind of 
I kind of click them in the dry position so that the head stays still so that it doesn't articulate and uh, kind of just begin moving up and away from the head. But this is a really easy tool to blend with. We're going from five zeros down the skin. So the jump is very small. So we don't really have to worry too much about that. So as you come up towards the top of that line, make sure that you're moving away. And uh, there's also other techniques you can use called peppering, where you just kind of tap it lightly, or you, you might want to come down with the grain. But whatever you got to do, the most important part of this particular portion is to make sure that there is no line between 5-0 and skin. So the only line you basically want left over here is that which you initially put in. So we're going to begin with the open taper. In this case, I'm actually using the uh, Andis cordless the newer and is cordless and of course uh, if anybody wants to get 10 percent off of this machine or any other barbering supplies really 614 barber supply uh, is one of my sponsors and they'll take good care of you if you use the code eddie you'll get 10 percent off i'll run that in the bottom down below too i'll give you guys a link to their website uh, so beginning with the open taper you can see that that's already removed a significant amount of that five zero line which is great because this is telling me on this side of the head it's not going to be that much work however uh, we know there's always a side of the head where it is going to be more work so i begin closing that clipper down in very small portions just running a portion of the blade and staying a little bit lower than i was in the previous step we will cover this extensively in the lives, but I've covered it many times before in the way which I just did that. I know it was kind of hard to see me moving the lever. I'm moving on to the half and I'm performing the exact same thing. So I know that, you know, it can be a little bit difficult uh, at times to kind of see what I'm doing, but I'm going to get as in-depth as I possibly can uh, to show you guys what's what's really going on here. So with the half, we're just moving up in our project progression because obviously uh, closed taper, open taper, and half open, and then half closed. So we're, we're, we're beginning with it open and closing it slightly. And as you can see, it's starting to make a real impact on this side of the blend. It's starting to come together. We're going to jump to the number one and uh, keep progressing up the side of the head. Now, this is kind of one of those things that as you get better at this and uh, get some experience in your in your repertoire here, above the ear, right in the area I'm working right now, that's always a trouble area because there's a little bit of a, a hollow in that portion of the head, right? So we're gonna need to texturize it a little bit, which means to remove bulk without affecting length, but I wanna remove some of the shadows in that area. And uh, I'll show you how we're gonna do that when we go back and fine tune it. In the back, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Uh, begin with the open taper, clicking it down one little notch at a time, staying a little bit lower than where I was in the previous step and uh, until I reach the very bottom step. And there will be times where you might have to go back with your trimmers, even in the event that you actually have it zero gapped and properly lined up, which there's a pretty good chance that many of you don't. So if you're really struggling to remove a harsh skin line, one of the first things that you should look at is what your um, clippers are doing. Make sure that they're lined up properly. Make sure that they're zero gapped and uh, balancing and complementing each other um, properly. So... When they, when they do that, this all flows super smooth. A lot of you guys ask if, if you need a fade blade um, to, to accomplish these, these cuts. The truth is you really don't need anything um, too spectacular or too special. Uh, you can accomplish these cuts with a variety of different types of blades. Certain blades perform certain functions better, um, but for the most part, we're, we're in good shape um, with anything as long as it is properly set up. So again, moving up the side of the head here with the half guard, and you can kind of see the way that I work with it in this crisscross pattern. I'm, I'm slightly uh, angling the clipper, moving back and forth, and that's that's what I referred to as the crisscross. That helps feed uh, the clipper better so that you get, you get a little bit better uh, results in less time. So just as we, as we realize what, what the clipper is doing is it's actually lifting hair into the moving blade so that it gets cut. And the best way to do that is to try to lift the, the hair up, um, on a, on a slight angle because you never know which way that grain pattern is going to go. So you can see where his grain pattern is now and you want to try to stay against it the most that you can. Um, but you know, from one side of the head to the other, it's going to differ. So always be paying attention to that grain pattern and make sure that you're, you're kind of coming 
opposite uh, the grain pattern in, in this particular case. And uh, another subject I wanted to cover because I, I feel like uh, a lot of people haven't really talked about this. Like I haven't seen a lot of tutorials on it. But when a client walks in with, uh, say, a full head of hair and they tell you they want a hard part skin fade, you have to decide where that hard part should go. So we're going to talk about in the live and I'm going to give you guys some examples of, of uh, clients that have done that and where I chose to put that line and why I chose to put it there. Um, in this situation, it was a little bit easier because he kind of came in with where he wanted it parted and I didn't really have to decide that for him. But there's plenty of times where we do have to decide that. And, uh, you know, that, that can be kind of challenging as well. Even, even for myself, there's times with, with clients who have, you know, hair that's, that's kind of difficult and, uh, you know, we're not able to, we're not able to figure it out as easy. So I, uh, again, working in that same little area, moving up the side of the head, using just the corners of the blade and, uh, trying not to, to go too high because this is, this is where we want to, we want to be real careful because we're going to start doing the detailing phase of the haircut. And, um, as I, as I talked about it before, you don't want to rush in this area, you, you want to make sure that when you're going in to do details, you're just doing a little bit at a time. Don't get frustrated. Don't rush because it's so easy to make a mistake right now. You have the whole blend coming together. Everything's going well for you. Uh, don't make the mistake of, uh, you know, hitting, hitting it too hard in one area and causing a bald spot. So a uh, little shear over comb action. We actually haven't covered this live, so pretty soon I'm going to go into this, but it's it's really a, an extensive topic, and I'm kind of trying to come up with a good lesson plan for it so that I can really help you guys understand it. But uh, essentially, the way I'm looking at it in this particular case is less is more here. Just don't take off too much hair. Just go ahead and, and move your way through the hair carefully, and don't be afraid to use your texturizing shears in instead if you have to. So, of course, I have a little bit of a shadow uh, there, so you're gonna see me kind of go through and minimize those those areas, and uh, eventually, if you continue working on it, you're gonna get it to come out perfect, and you're gonna find out that having some texturizing shears is as important as having a pair of clippers. It's as important as anything else, and uh, when I still have some other bulk left over when I'm done, I'm kind of going through the hair and I'm looking to see if there's anything I can do with clipper over comb. And now that I've removed all the impediments that were out of the way, I know that I'm not going too high. Like this is a perfect time to go back in and kind of re-detail re uh, with the clipper over comb. So a lot of people try to do too much with it um, initially. And then when they get done, you know, when they get down to this portion of the haircut, um, they're realizing that they made mistakes because they got a bunch of light spots all over the place or maybe some dark spots. So, you know, this is a much better time to go back in with the clipper over comb, um, fine tune it a little bit. Mix it up, use your shear, your shear over comb, texturizing shears over comb, uh, clipper over comb. And, um, you know, in this case, remember I began with the one and one half. Now I got the number two on my clipper. And uh, I, just, I just wanted to double and triple check that those longer lengths that I was meeting, I was meeting it properly, uh, that I was giving myself that, that perfect blend. So now that the blend is pretty much done with, um, we're going to begin the cut on the top. And uh, this is a subject that we really need to, to dive into. We really need to cover in depth. And there are some tools and some techniques that I'll, I'll explain to you uh, that will make this easy. A lot of people do tend to overcomplicate cutting the hair on top. And uh, I don't really understand it. But if we start in the center with a Mohawk guideline, um, this, this is a great technique that will give you essentially two guidelines, one stationary, one traveling, and it works for pretty much any kind of client's haircut, uh, that you're going to be doing as far as like skin fades do. If you notice, I actually try to stay away from the bangs. Um, I try to comb them out, stay away from them and work behind them. So you see my guide, I'm going to work just alongside of my guide here. And I'm just going to nip a little bit of hair. I'm not, I'm not trying to fix the whole thing in one go little bit of hair. I'm staying right in that little line and I'm going to continue traveling back towards this crown. Um, just working off of that small guideline that I used. Now I admit I could have tipped the camera up a tiny bit higher, but I think this gets my point across and I've showed this technique before. So essentially you're moving with a traveling guideline and a stationary guideline at the exact same time. So back towards the front and you can see me meeting the guide and take very, very small steps back 
and this this client has a lot of hair per square inch, a very high density. Uh, as a matter of fact, blondes, or in his case, dirty blondes, have uh, the most amount of hair per square inch, followed only second by redheads. So in this case, I chose to use a comb that was a little bit wider. However, if you're dealing with a client who has, say, finer hair or thinner hair or less density, uh, it might be a good idea uh, to use your taper comb, which is one of my favorite combs for this technique. So again, now I'm getting into the bangs just a tiny bit, but as you can see, I'm over directing them backwards, which is going to cause a length increase when they fall forward. On this left side where the hard part is, there's a bit of a pet peeve that I have. I can't tell you how many clients have came in with haircuts from other barbers and for whatever reason, they never finish off this side properly. And they always leave this like long hunk of hair along um, this, this, this hard part. And I, and I never really understood why they did that. Uh, but you can cut this hair just as well as any other. And you don't have to worry about it because the client's probably going to have to style it anyway. So if you thought leaving it longer was going to help you in some situations, it does. But uh, more often than not, leaving it long by the part right there doesn't really do the client that much good it just gives them a big old thick head of hair there so as i'm working off of this guide i'm, I'm continuing my way uh down towards the parietal ridge and that is the section that we met with some shear over comb so this is the the connecting point um, between here and, and shear over comb i try to do as little shear work on, on top as possible uh, i should say finger and shear work on top as possible so now is a great time for me to go in and just fine tune uh, that left side, now that I know what the top's doing, now that I know what the blend's doing, um, I can decide exactly how much weight I wanted to leave on that, and we're going to address the bangs and just and just get those out of the way as well. So I know that my bangs are even, and there's, there's one last little step uh, that I need to do to blend them in, because remember, I told you I left them a little bit longer, right? So still, they are a little bit longer, and they're not blended in properly. So... This is the section that you want to lift up in the front, and I'm just connecting my previous guideline to my new guideline, which is that very shortest piece in the very front, and that, that shortest piece in the front, that was obviously where I kept my bangs. So as long as I'm directing them out just like this, straight up off of the head at 90 degrees, I'm not going to accidentally cut the bangs too short. It's actually going to be very easy. So I'm going to go into this topic a little bit further uh, in another video, but basically what's what's happening here is actually pretty simple. You cut your bangs, you cut your interior length, and you're just connecting the two. Whether you wanted your bangs to stay long uh, or be the same the same length as the rest of it, um, that's that's entirely up to you. So I'm just going to go back, double check, make sure there's no anomalies or any funny business going on. Uh, but as you can see, the top's laying a lot better at this length. Uh, than it was previously as we we came in and i don't know if anybody caught the fact that i'm using an automatic spray bottle uh, but i am using an automatic spray bottle because uh i'm probably starting to get the beginning stages of carpal tunnel so i'd much rather use an automatic spray bottle which i put the link in the description yes it's for gardening damn thing stays charged forever and i don't have to uh, hurt my hand by squirting it holds a lot of water it's definitely a, a cool must have for me personally Going in with the Gamma uh, tools, Gamma's been really kind to me and uh, has, has sponsored my channel and has been sending me all kinds of stuff. And we are doing a giveaway right now, uh, currently. So if you have missed the live and you didn't see the giveaway, um, the details are, are on that live. Go check it out and uh, follow Gamma. Comment on that particular video that we talked about. Say the YouTube Barber Academy sent you. And uh, we'll be running the random comment picker next Saturday uh, night which is going to be, I don't know, what is it? Today's the, the first, uh, second, third, fourth. It'll be about the fifth. I, I could be wrong. I'm going to have to double check, but I'll leave, it in the, I'll leave it in the comments below. So, yeah, don't miss your chance to win that Gamma blow dryer, man, because that thing, whew, does it crank. So now we're going to go through, we're going to do the beard, and it's kind of cool because I got another video in the hole that just specifically deals with bald and beautiful with a beard, and we're going we're gonna to talk about how to do that as well. Uh, but all I'm really doing is I'm knocking out all the bulk and uh, this this little trimmer does a fantastic job of, of leaving it very close to where the the skin in the in the electric shaver can easily pick up whatever's left or you can use a razor uh, depending on how you, you want to finish it. I'm, I'm using my neck duster to just knock away any loose hairs just to make sure that there isn't any um, hair that's that's still 
uh, attached. I, I just want to make sure that it's not attached. So I'm, I'm coming through and you guys could see that the line that this thing makes is, is fantastic. And, uh, many of you guys asked me about these trimmers. Do I, do I think they're, they're, they're great. Uh, this, that, that I've, I've asked, I've, I've had all kinds of questions and uh, I'll tell you my, my honest to God opinion on them, not just because they sponsor me, but they put down a hell of a good line. This ceramic blade made a huge difference. And with that ceramic blade, and if anybody was to use these, they would enjoy them. However, they're not for removing bulk. They don't do a fantastic job of removing bulk, but I don't agree with moving bulk with your trimmers anyways. So it's, it's not really a problem with me and the way that I work. I know that some of you guys like to um, whack down the side of your client's head with a pair of trimmers. And, uh, you know, for celebrity barbers and people who are constantly going through a ton of tools and having stuff sent to them for free, it makes sense to do that because why not show off whatever you want? But for the guy who's down in the trench, you need to get a detachable, man. You're just wasting your time. You don't have two-hour appointment windows. You don't charge enough to do that. And you're just, you're just not going to make enough money uh, if you choose to go that route. So I, I, really, I really think that you need to get a detachable. I'm choosing to come underneath with the Bronze Series 9. And we're just going to remove whatever bulk is left. As you can see, um, his neck is not irritated or anything like that in the slightest bit. Um, I don't think his neck even knows it got shaved, which is exactly how we want it to be. He wanted to, uh, I believe he, he wanted to keep his beard growing. He was trying to grow it out. This is something I run into a lot because people see me with the big old beard and, uh, you know, they, they want to, they probably want to grow it out as well. And then I'll, I'll follow that up with a little bit of um, razor work because the reason why I use the electric shaver before that is it just makes everything so smooth. It takes one extra second to do that electric shaver. And then when I come back through with the razor, uh, there's, there's just no, there's just no, um, irritation. It makes it simple and it makes it so I could just do what I got to do, put the line in, make it look nice and, uh, and keeps it moving, you know? So we're just, we're just going to finish up this beard and then I'm going to match it up on the top, on the top line. And uh, this is uh, an area where I, I think a lot of people uh, tend to struggle with is, is trying to actually get both sides even. I've seen a number of Instagram posts where they only show one side of the head. Uh, they only show the good side. They don't show the bad side. Uh, they create unrealistic expectations and heavily Photoshop these photos and make you think that your work is inferior as a result of it. When none of this is true, man, like people who are really barbering, like not people who are on stage, I'm talking about people who are actually doing this day in and day out. They don't got time for that kind of crap, man. We're, we're in here trying to do the best job we can within the 30 minutes that we got. And, uh, many of us are doing a pretty good job. So we don't have time for games. We need to get tools that work fast. We need to use techniques that are efficient and we need to get through it so that we can make some money. So once I've ran the razor, I like to go back with the trimmer and just and just knock out any little overhang that is there, make sure that it's perfect. And uh, I love to start down towards the mustache. And this kid's hair, I was trying to keep as much hair as possible, so it really wasn't a, a big issue on this case, but I like to start down by the mustache uh, for my sides because the reason is, is um, simple. If you look down at the mustache, that's where you'll be able to line it up easily on the left and on the right side. So that's kind of what I like to do. I usually do that with the trimmers before I go in with my razor so that I know that my line is is approximately even. And then I'll, I'll go back through and usually I'll set them up in the chair, have them looking straight at the mirror and uh, have a better view of it. But it's, it's kind of hard to film the whole thing because the camera just gets in the way when I try to show how I use the mirror. You'll just have to trust that I do. Always start down by the mustache. Uh, then work your way up and that's, that's how you're going to get it even fast. I don't always have to do that, but it makes it easier just to get it even on both sides as you, as you do that. So, uh, I'm coming against the grain. I want to knock out any other little loose hairs and another little beard tip that I can give you is uh, a lot of barbers like to leave the buildup of hair that was cut on that line just to emphasize that line and make that line look a little bit better. Um, but you don't really have to do that. It'll actually look a lot better if you wipe away those loose hairs and shave it one more time and you can really make that line pop. Uh, but in, in my case with this client, he's trying to grow his beard out. Um, his beard is a little bit sparse towards the mustache. So we, we want to just kind of be careful, let it grow. Uh, let's see what's going to develop here. And um, I'm just going to knock out any of the extremely long ones or any of the bushy ones that are just making my style not look too good. 
around the lips. Want to get it off of the lips using the corner. Um, this machine is is nice and sharp, but you got to be careful around the corners of the mouth with with anybody. You guys could see. Tell me what you thought. Um, is the cut clean? Uh, did you guys learn anything? And uh, again, we're we're gonna get into this live. Uh, we're gonna break certain parts of this video down to really help you with your learning. This is the YouTube Barber Academy. I am Mr. Eddie Barber. I hope you learned something here today. And if you did, hit that thumbs up, hit me a little subscribe, and don't forget to push that notification bell so you can catch me on the live Saturday night live at 8 p.m. And the links of everything that I use will be down below in the description. Until the very next video, man, I'll probably see you guys Saturday.